So now we've got a description of the wave properties and how they relate. The next step is to come up with a detailed mathematical description of a wave so that we can describe the displacement of the wave's medium as a function of position and as a function of time. So to do that, we're going to start with some very simple, very basic mathematical principles discussing how waves uh, move through a medium with a velocity. And from that, we're going to come up with an equation that we can use to describe waves. So what we want to do now is develop a mathematical description for waves. So to do that, let's have a look at an example wave here. So let's just say it's a pulse on a string. And it's moving in this direction here, so that as time goes by, you can see that the wave has moved to a larger value of the position, uh, which we'll label x. So let's say that this function here, this displacement, is described by some function. And we'll call that f. Now clearly the displacement is going to be a function of the position because the displacement here is different than the displacement here and the difference to the displacement here. So we're going to have it as a function of displacement. But the shape remains the same as time increases but the position at the top here changes. And so if we're at you know one unit here we're at two units here, and we're at three units here. And so as time increases, the position of the center increases. So this means that we're going to be minus c times t, where ct, c here, is going to be the phase velocity, because it's the velocity of a point of constant phase, say the top here of this crest. And so as this crest moves, it's moved some distance here, which is given by c times t. And so when I want to describe this function here, if I've got to subtract off ct from the position and then plot it, and that will give me a wave function that moves to progressively larger and larger values of position. In other words, it gives me a wave that is moving in this direction, because as time increases, I'm subtracting more from the x-coordinate, and so you know, the x-coordinate will progress in a positive direction. So this is a general function that describes any constant shape displacement as it moves in the positive x direction. But that's not the only possibility. Supposing I have a wave that's moving in this direction, then I don't want to add uh, I don't want to subtract ct, I want to add ct. And so then my function let's call it g will be equal to x plus ct. And so whereas this corresponds to a wave moving in the positive x direction, this corresponds to a wave moving in the negative x direction. And so these are the two wave functions that I have for generic waves. So my total solution, since we're talking about uh, displacements from equilibrium, my total displacement from the equilibrium, let's call it phi, is going to be f of x minus ct plus g of x plus ct. And so this is my total displacement here, and then it's going to be a combination of my positive going and my negative going waves. So now we want to have an equation. We want to be able to put this into some sort of equation that we're eventually going to be able to solve to see what each of these types of waves look like. So to do that, we have to have a look at partial differentials. And we have to introduce two new variables. And the first of these is going to be psi. And we're going to call that x minus ct. And then we're going to introduce a variable called eta. And this is going to be x plus ct. And so if I rewrite phi now, phi is going to be a function of psi plus a function g of eta. And so I've now expressed this in terms of two independent variables. Since I can choose position and I can choose time, I can look at any point on the wave I like, and I can look at any time I like. And so these are two independent variables. And so 
although I'm combining them in different ways, what I'm ending up with is two independent variables. And if I pick eta and psi, then that will uniquely determine a fixed value of x and a fixed value of t. So I haven't altered the number of variables. All I've done is I've just transformed them from x and t into psi and eta. So now let's have a look at our partial differentials. So here's our displacement um, as a function of psi and eta for our two waves moving in different directions. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take a partial uh, derivative of that. So we're going to look at partial phi by partial psi. So if I differentiate this with respect to psi, I'm going to get partial f by partial psi. But if I differentiate this with respect to psi, it's not a function of psi, because it's a function of eta, and so I'm going to get zero. So because this is, you know, if I hold psi constant, this is going to be a constant uh, value. Differentiate a constant value, you get nothing. So now I'm going to differentiate with respect to eta. So I'm going to get partial squared phi by partial eta partial psi. And this, well, if I've got f, well, f, remember, is a function of psi. So if I differentiate it with respect to eta, I'm keeping psi constant. So this is a constant. Even when I differentiate it, what I'm going to have left is still a function of psi only. So this is going to be equal to 0. So we've got a very nice, simple partial differential equation, but it's in terms of eta and psi, which isn't particularly useful. We want to get it in terms of x and t. So what we need to do is we need to do a transform from eta and psi into x and t. So to do that, we have to use what's called the partial differential chain rule. And this is going to be uh, a little bit different from our uh, ordinary differential chain rule because we've now got two variables. So let's have a look at partial phi by partial psi. So partial phi by partial psi, well, this is going to be just like the ordinary differential chain rule. It'll be partial phi by partial x times partial x by partial psi, right? And if these were d's instead of partials, then this would be perfectly normal for an ordinary differential. But we're doing partial derivatives because there's two variables, x and t, or psi and eta. So psi here is a function of both x and t. So this has taken care of changes with respect to x, but we also need to take care of changes with respect to time as well. And so we have to add in this extra term, partial phi by partial t times partial t by partial psi. And similarly, had we done this with respect to eta, we'd have partial phi by partial eta, and this would be equal to partial phi by partial x times partial x by partial eta plus partial phi by partial t times partial t by partial eta. So we need to calculate these four quantities here um, in order to be able to convert from eta and psi differentials into x and t differentials. So to do that, we have to rearrange our expressions. So what we want is we want x in terms of eta and psi. And so x is equal to a half psi plus eta. Well, psi is x minus ct. Um, and eta is x plus ct. So if I add them together, I'm going to get here, I'm going to get 2x. And I'm going to get minus ct plus ct, so the cts will cancel. And so to get back to x, I have to divide by 2, and that's going to give me x. For t, it's very similar. I get 1 over 2c, though, now, because of this extra c factor. And I have eta minus psi. And this is because I've got x plus ct here minus x minus ct. So I've got x minus x. The x's are cancelling. And I've got ct minus minus ct. So this bracket here will give me 2ct. So I have to divide it by 2c to get me back to t. So these are our expressions for x and t in terms of psi and uh, psi and eta. So all I have to do now is differentiate them. So partial x by partial psi 
is, well, if I differentiate this with respect to uh, xi, I get partial x by partial xi here. And then here, eta will differentiate to give me 0 because it's a constant if I'm doing a partial derivative with respect to xi. And so this is just going to give me a half. Then if I do partial t by partial psi here, then I'm going to end up with, well, this will differentiate to give me 0. This will differentiate to give me 1, but it's a minus sign, so it's minus 1 times 1 over 2c. So that's minus 1 over 2c. If I look at partial x by partial eta, well, this is just going to give me a half again. This differentiates to 0. This differentiates to 1, so I'm left with a half. And then I have partial t by partial eta. And so what does that give me? Well, this differentiates to 1, that differentiates to 0, so I'm left with 1 over 2c. So all I have to do now is put these terms here into these expressions. And what I'm left with is partial phi by partial psi, if I can draw that right. And that's equal to partial x by partial xi, well that's a half here, so that's a half partial phi by partial x plus, and then partial t by partial xi, well that's minus 1 over 2c, so actually this isn't plus, it's minus 1 over 2c times partial phi by partial t. And then similarly here, if I look at the partial phi by partial eta, what I'm left with is, well, partial x by partial eta is, from here, it's just a half. So that's a half partial phi by partial x. And then I've got partial t by partial eta. Well, that's plus 1 over 2c. So this one is actually plus 1 over 2c partial phi by partial t. So now I can use these expressions, and I can substitute it here into this partial differential equation and we'll get a partial differential equation in terms of x and t. So let's do that. Okay, so here's our differential equation that we had for our wave, and here were our two uh, substitutions we had for partial phi by partial eta and partial phi by partial uh, xi. So let's write this out uh, a little bit more formally. So this is partial by partial eta of partial phi by partial psi. So this is going to be partial by partial eta of, and then if I look at partial phi by partial psi, this is a half partial phi by partial x minus 1 over 2c partial phi by partial t. So here now I'm going to be differentiating with respect to eta, so I'm going to have a half partial by partial x of this entire expression. So this is going to be a half times. Now, a, ha um, a half of, if I take this term here, I'm going to differentiate it partial derivative with respect to x. I'm going to end up with a half partial squared phi by partial x squared. Now, if I look at this term here, I've got phi, I'm differentiating phi with respect to t here. And so here, what I'm going to end up with is I'm going to have minus a half, remember, because I get this half here, and then times 1 over 2c, and now partial squared phi by partial um, x partial t. Okay, so now I've got to look at this term here. So I'm going to have 1 over 2c partial phi by partial by partial t of this expression here, because now I've not got phi, I've got this whole expression here. So this is going to give me um, plus 1 over 2c times, and then I get a half here, and then I have partial phi by partial x differentiated with respect to t. So this is going to be partial squared phi by partial t partial x. And then lastly, I'm going to have um, 1 over 2c. So it's going to be plus 1 over 2c partial by partial t of this expression, which is going to be minus 1 over 2c times partial squared phi by partial t squared. 
Okay, so this rather nasty looking expression is about to get a lot simpler because this expression is equal to this expression. The order of partial differentiation does not matter. All right, so these two things are equal, and you'll notice that this is minus 1 over 4c times this expression, and this is plus 1 over 4c times this expression. So these two terms cancel. And what we're left with is we're left with 1 over 4 partial squared phi by partial x squared, and then minus 1 over 4c squared times partial squared phi by partial t squared, and this is equal to 0, just like the original expression here was equal to 0. So I can cancel the quarters, right, multiply everything by 4, and then I can 4 times 0 is 0, so that doesn't change. And I'm now going to take this expression here, and I'm going to move it, this term, over to the other side of the equation, and what I'm left with is partial squared phi by partial x squared is equal to 1 over c squared times partial squared phi by partial t squared. And this is the wave equation. So this e equation here is extremely important in physics. It's used to describe um, all mechanical and uh, all classical waves um, satisfy this wave equation. And so what it's telling us is that if we take our displacement and we differentiate it with respect to x twice, keeping time constant, then we will get the same value if we take our displacement, differentiate it with respect to time twice, keeping x constant, and multiply by 1 over c squared. So remember here, of course, our displacement is a function of x and time. So it's a function of position and time. So this is the wave equation, and the solutions to this wave equation will be waves. So now we have an equation that will describe any wave. And unfortunately, as we've seen, it's a little bit of a complicated equation. It's a partial differential equation, um, but it is actually not that challenging to solve, and that's what we'll look at next.